Welcome participants to lecture number 3. In this I have chosen a small topic on how we can control the fabric structure using float and tuck stitches. So, in this particular lecture I am going to show you some fabric samples where we have created a pattern of float and tuck stitches along the courses and then we will do the analysis, we will check how the GSM thread densities loop length will change uh, in the fabric. So, let us see what is actually tuck and loop stitches and float stitches. So, in tuck you have already seen uh, you have two intermeshing points missing and the needle catches the new yarn along with the old loop. In float needle carries the old loop, but do not catches the new yarn. This is how you created float stitches. Uh, in last lecture I also shown you some of the fabric samples where the width was changing, the structure was changing, the appearance was changing. So, here uh, we are going to analyze how because of these type of stitches it changes the fabric appearance and properties. We will be focusing mainly on the fabrics that was created on V bed uh, which is there in our lab and we selectively control tuck and float uh, using clearing cam and raising cam setting. So, this is the machine and you have this indicates the position of clearing cam setting. When the carrier is moving from left to right, you can raise the clearing cam from one side to other side and when the carrier is moving from right to left, you can use this clearing cam to control the clearing cam setting. So, uh, this is the actual knob. So, if you see from the other side, uh, this is how it will look. So, this is the position where the clearing cam is then active and this is the position the clearing cam is in deactive position. So, this position indicates when you press like this the metallic bar the clearing cam go inside the platform and in that case the needle butt will not engage with the cam profile. So, uh, this is how it works. So, the moment you press it from one side to other side you basically suppress the clearing cam and then you can run the machine for this is only for one direction on one bed. So, similarly you have four clearing cam setting two for each bed for left to right direction and right to left direction and similarly for the other carrier on opposite bed you have two cam settings. So, there are total four cam setting available on uh, V bed machine and clearing cam is the position where you can play to control the so, here some of the loops you can see there are two loops has been there on one of the bed while the other bed is having just one loops. So, uh, for float stitch raising cam has to be deactivated. So, this is the location you can push this uh, metallic bar uh, inside to make float stitches. So, uh, this is how I do. So, you have four float stitches uh, two for each bed. So, these two are um, operational when you are moving the carrier from one side to other side, when you are reversing the direction of carrier, the opposite two cams, um, raising cams will operate. So, at this moment in this video, I am pushing inside. So, in that case, I am making sure the raising cam has suppressed inside. So, in that case, you can see no needles has been selected on this bed, only this needles on opposite bed has been selected because in that the raising cam has been still active. But when once I am reversing the path, you can see both the needles of the beds has been selected. So, only one side you can see um, only one side the cam has been deactivated, raising cam has been deactivated, but for the opposite side the raising cam has not been deactivated. So, this is how you create float stitches. So, so we can have different designs of the float, but um, in this lecture I am going to focus mainly on some specific designs. Uh, which is uh, mainly popular in tuck category and also in float categories. So, in tuck categories we have uh, cardigan designs, double cardigan, half cardigan, full cardigan, double half cardigan uh, which belongs to tuck categories. Uh, in float you have Milano alternating half Milano, rib ripple, Milano rib. So, these are the some common uh, technical names which you will find in the industries. Uh, if you follow the notations only, then you do not need to remember these names. Uh, simply just understood uh, what exactly um, 
what are the pattern uh, or the setting you have done on the machines to create the courses in some sequence. So uh, let's see um, some of these fabric samples. I have these samples with me and I'm going to show you these designs as well. Obviously in, in carrying the tuck and float, there are unlimited numbers or unlimited possibilities that can be there on the machine. So for example, I'm just giving a simple hint. I already given this uh, indications in the last class also, like uh, you can play each section um, you can change the cam setting of each section and you can create different nature of stitches on the fabric surface. Because of that, you can see how the structure will look like this. For example, if you see this particular section, three tuck has been created in alternating courses. So uh, let me give you some of the notation for this particular section of the fabrics. So. So to create this particular section of the fabric, so in the first course, I created rib. In second course, I created tuck on the back bed. In third course also, I created tuck on the back bed. In fourth course also, I created tuck on the back bed. So more tuck consecutively, actually it will result in higher fabric width, which I am going to show you in uh, few minutes. So you can see clearly how much the width has increased because you have created three consecutively tuck on the same needles. Because of that, the legs become open. And you can see there is a bigger held loop. If you carefully see, the loop is much, much bigger. So if you see individual loops, this is much, much bigger compared to the loops. If you see here, which is uh, the normal rib design, the loop is much, much smaller. But here you can see this is a clearly a bigger loop you can observe. So this is much, much bigger held loop and this is normal rib loop on, the bo on both the sides. So uh, if you carefully see how the loops will be there especially in this needle. So if you see this needle, it, it will be having loop like this. In the second course, I am just focusing on one needle it will be catching the, the same old loop and then it will be taking one float. And then in the third course, the same needle will be still catching the old loop and then two tuck. So these are the tuck. In the fourth course also, the, the hell loop will be still there in the needle head and then you will be having three tuck together on the same needle. In the fifth course, basically then you are making the rib. It means all these loops which was there on the needle, it will be released in the next course. So this is how you will create a new loop and all these four and as well as the bigger loops will come like this. So I have also in one of the fabric notations, you might see there was three tuck loop and then one loop was created on the same needle. So this was the sequence of uh, needle in this particular fabric. So starting from simple loop, then this, this is held loop. Then held loop is getting bigger and bigger because you are increasing number of tuck. And finally, three tuck and one held loop will be released in the fifth course when it will create a rib design. So, so that needle, that needle will release three tuck and old loop. So this is, uh, this is how you can see uh, how the structure is disturbed 
if you see other part also uh, i have changed the design so designs are unlimited let's focus on some of the uh, common market designs which is uh, popular in uh, sweaters and some of the t-shirts which you are wearing so these designs belongs to cardigan and half cardigan design so these are the designs uh, which you will find more popular in the market so one belong to half cardigan design and full cardigan designs so if you see the movement of uh, yarn so in the first course all are knitting so in the first course all are knitting i hope you know the fabric notation so in the first course all beds are knitting so you can see here this is the front bed technical front then back technical front then back then technical front so this is how it is knitting so in the second course if you see the black color so basically this is making tuck and then this is loop then again tuck then loop then tuck okay so basically front bed needles are making tuck and back bed needles are making loops in the second course if you follow the path of black yarn so this is tuck you can see it is there with the head so this is tuck this is tuck and then if you see this one this is a loop technical back loop so like this then if you see third column this is again tuck and then if you see fourth column again loop and then this is again tuck loop tuck loop so what you can observe here is in first course both beds are knitting in second course front bed is making tuck back bed is making loop okay in full cardigan if you see if you carefully see in full cardigan in the first course if you carefully see this is technical front this is loop then tuck then loop then tuck then loop tuck so the front bed is making loop while if you see the back bed needles this one is making tuck okay so this is tuck then if you go for third loop in the course this is making technical front then tuck technical front then tuck technical front so this is how it is doing so in half cardigan both loops but in full cardigan one is making loop other is making tuck in the second course let's see second course how it is changing so in the second course this is the black color yarn which you can see so the first one is making tuck so the black one the head is not visible actually but you can see the legs are open and and it is on the head side so naturally this become tuck on the front bed then if you see this black one this is making back loop on the back bed because it is on the back side then again this is tuck this is on the tuck side you can see here this is the front bed needle then again back needle then again tuck and then like this so the only uh, difference you can see in half cardigan is the front knee bed needles is making loop and tuck alternatively but in full cardigan both front and back needles are making tuck and loop alternatively in courses so when front bed are making loop back bed is making tuck when front bed is making tuck then back bed is making loops so this is how the fabric take place and also you can see the yarn part are different so this is half cardigan and we call this as a full cardigan this these two designs are very popular in sweaters uh, let me show you the fabric appearance so uh, in reality if you see in 
basically these are the uh, four variation of tuck which is uh, quite popular in uh, in tuck category so the first one is uh, cardigan which we call uh, full cardigan also so front tuck back loop then front loop back tuck so these are it repeats in two courses then double cardigan we are just repeating each of these courses twice so that's why it is called double cardigan so here two tucks simultaneously and two loops on the back bed simultaneously in two courses and then in third course the front is making loop back is making tuck in fourth courses front is making again loop back is making tuck so this is just each of the course of cardigan is repeating twice so that's why this is the repeat design of double cardigan in half cardigan we have already seen and the front is making loops in both the courses back is making loop and tuck in alternatingly courses so this is half cardigan double half cardigan again we if we repeat each of the courses two times it become double half cardigan so this is two courses simultaneously uh, where both beds are making loops here one uh, front bed is making loop back is making tuck here front is making loop back, back is making tuck so this is four designs cardigan double cardigan half cardigan and double half cardigan so let's uh, let me show you some of these fabric so in a sequence i created these three tuck designs so first of all if you see the normal rib fabric so normal rib fabrics uh, the width is like this but the moment you introduce tuck so width increases okay so because of that number of veils which you can count in any of the tuck fabric will be much much lower compared to a normal rib fabric so this is the rib fabric one cross one and you can see how the tuck is changing the fabric width so so this part of the fabric is basically the cardigan so so if you see this part of the fabric this is basically the cardigan okay now uh, if you see this part of the fabric so i have given a marker here so that whenever i was changing i put some marker so that i can differentiate the fabric segment so this was basically the half cardigan so this part of the fabric and when you go for this part this is basically double half cardigan so so this is the if you go for this segment so the the repeat unit is this so this is how i created this is double half cardigan and if you go below this is uh, this is half cardigan and if you go even below this is cardigan so you can see double um, half cardigan and cardigan it looks slightly different if you reverse the fabric in the opposite side then fabric of three designs will again look different so this is double half cardigan and this is half cardigan and now let's see cardigan so this is cardigan half cardigan and double half cardigan so you can see how these three segments look different so double half cardigan half cardigan and cardigan so um, in double half cardigan if you try to pull the yarn from one of the ends so please remember rib actually in the rib fabrics we can take out the yarn from the last course so this is the last course i created on the machine so um, i'm going to show you how you can see there are two ribs and two tucks if i take out the yarn for four courses consecutively so let's try to first find out so if you see the loops are being coming out from both the needles so this is naturally a rib so if you carefully see the loops are coming out from 
both the sides. So, this is the rib course. Now, when in the second course you can see only, so this is the tuck. So, you can see uh, you can you can see here only the loop is coming from one side and other side the tuck is there which is not engaged. So, you can observe this is tuck. So, next course is tuck on the back bed loop on the front bed. So, this is you can see this is the tuck. Now, let us go for the third course. Again the similar nature you can see here loop is coming from the front bed tuck from the back bed front bed back tuck loop tuck then this is loop tuck then after loop then tuck then loop tuck. So, this is how so loop tuck loop tuck loop tuck. So, this is how you can create. So, the second course is also uh, tuck on the back bed, two consecutive tuck on the back bed. Now, let us go for the uh, fourth course where you will see loops on the both the beds. So, can you see here the loops are coming out from both the bed, loops are coming out from both the beds which was not there in case of tuck loops. So, you can see here loops are coming out from both the beds. So, you can see here. So, so what you have observed here is, so basically two rib and then two tuck. So, we started from here. So, first rib then two uh, tuck then again rib then you will observe again rib and then two tuck. So, this is how the fabric has been created in this. So, this is double half cardigan, this is half cardigan and this is cardigan. Now, let us see how uh, the structural characteristics will change. So, you know how you can take out the yarn, you can take out the yarn, you can measure the loop length, you can measure the thread density, you can measure the density of the fabric. So, everything you can measure for the cardigan. So, now let us see the wales per inch and coarse per inch of the fabric. So, wales per inch if you measure, so I used actually the machine which was used was uh, 4 gauge machine and it was V bed. Okay. So, I, I make all the 4 samples on 4 gauge machine V bed okay. and the yarn count was around 192 tex which I already showed you in double jersey fabric characterization. So, I, I expect you to please go and review this. So, for cardigan the whale uh, per inch which was measured was 7, for double cardigan it was measured 8, half cardigan 6 and double half cardigan 8. So, you can see more tuck consecutively you can have more number of whales per inch. Okay. Course per inch, when you see the course per inch it was 6, 6, 6 and 7. So, uh, and if you see GSM of the fabric, it was observed the cardigan was having 250 gram per meter square, this was 284 gram per meter square, this was 225 gram per meter square and this was 310 gram per meter square. So, this is what was observed. Um, after analysis of these fabrics. So, uh, and if you see the loop length, so if you see the cardigan, both the cores are similar. 
So if you take out the yarn of one course and divide it by total number of needles, the loop length was 1.6 centimeter for this particular course. Uh, if you go for double cardigan also, all the courses are almost similar, only the, the nature of tuck and loop has been exchanged after two courses. So um, each courses, the loop length was observed same, so 1.54 centimeter. In half cardigan, the loop length was observed 1.64 centimeter. And in double half cardigan, the loop length, the average loop length was observed uh, for, uh, so in half cardigan also if you see this is the rib loop length where all the loops are in the rib shape. So all are loops, so 1.6 centimeter, 64 centimeter. But if you see this particular course, so front are making loops, back are making tuck. So naturally the loop length of second course will be different than loop length of first course. So the average loop length which includes the loop length of normal loop stitch and tuck stitch and here um, only the loop stitch is there. So, so the loop length was lower 1.45 centimeter because you know in tuck the foot is missing so that's why the loop length if you take out the average loop length including loop stitches and tuck stitches of this particular course you will observe lesser loop length. So 1.45 here 1.64. Again if you go for double half cardigan the loop length was um, 1.59 for loops on the both sides for the tuck side it was 1.46 centimeter. So the key take which you can observe here is rib loop length is bigger, tuck loop length is smaller 1.46 centimeter. Uh, the next thing which you can observe here is the amount of whales per inch. So in cardigan you have 7 whales per inch, in double cardigan you have 8 and in double half cardigan also 8 and half cardigan it is 6. So when you have more number of whales per inch naturally the stitch density which is the multiplication of whales per inch and course per inch. So here the total number of stitch density stitch density is 42 loops per inch square, here 8648, here 36, here 56. So naturally if you see double half cardigan more number of loops per unit area was present. So that is why the GSM is also observed very higher. So uh, this was the normal fabric analysis of uh, tuck design depending on how you place the tuck stitches in the fabric, the nature of fabric will change. So sometimes it can go for lower uh, weight also. So here you can see half cardigan is the lowest weight 225 gram per meter square and double half cardigan is the highest weight 310 gram per meter square. So this is how we do the analysis for tuck variation, okay. So in rib category, uh, especially in float category, uh, here there are four uh, basic fabric structure which is quite popular in the industry is uh, which is uh, created by creating floats uh, in the courses. So the first category is half Milano. So in half Milano you have first course both uh, bed are knitting. In second course only uh, back bed is knitting, front is making floats. So uh, and this fabric is repeating in two courses. Alternating half Milano, here um, first course is making knit, both knit. Second course only back is knitting, front is remaining ideal. In third course it is knitting, in fourth course only front are uh, making loop, back is uh, remaining ideal. So this is alternating half Milano because both bed needles are making float but alternatively. Milano rib where you have rib in the first course, second course you have 
float on the front bed and knit on the back bed. Second course, you have float on the uh, back bed and knit on the front bed. So, both needles are making float, but alternatively and there is additional one rib present. Rib ripple, only one bed is making float. So, here both bed are making knit. Second course, only back is knitting, front tree is remaining ideal. Third course, back is knitting, front is remaining ideal. So, Milano rib and rib ripple are different in the sense, uh, only um, one bed is operating in for the float condition. So, um, this uh, four fabric is also present with me. So, I can show you how these fabrics looks. Uh, it is actually very difficult to um, observe the nature of uh, this fabric. It is not easy by looking that you can identify which one is half Milano, which one is alternating half Milano. But if you carefully take out the yarn, then you can follow this path. So, um, this one is uh, basically alternating half Milano. So, this segment is alternating half Milano. You can see here. After that, this one is rib ripple. You can you can clearly see there is some difference. So, um, this part is basically the rib ripple and this one is alternating half Milano, this one is alternating half Milano, this one is rib ripple and then you can go further down. So, you can see again this segment and this segment is different. So, this segment is Milano rib. So, this is the Milano rib. So, you can see here Milano rib how they are different and this one is uh, rib ripple. So, this segment is Milano rib and this segment is rib ripple. Okay. And the last part is half Milano. So, this is your half Milano. So, if you if you if you see this one, this one is Milano rib and this one if you see again you can carefully observe these two fabric surface looks different. So, this is half Milano. So, uh, if you reverse the fabric again uh, the it will look different. So, this is alternating half Milano. So, this is this is alternating half Milano. Then this is this part of the fabric is rib ripple and this part of the fabric is Milano rib. So, you can see this part and this part is slightly different, but the difference is not significant by eye, but when you take out the yarn and then you will, if you note down the float notation, then you can observe this, each of these section of the fabric is different and this is half Milano. So, uh, this is how we created this fabric and now let us see how the structure in terms of loop length GSM are different for all of these fabrics. The loop length of this particular course was 1.54 centimeter. Uh, this uh, fabric was again created on the V-bed machine, V-bed machine with 4 gauge. Okay? So, all 4 fabrics was created on the same machine with 4 gauge. So, 1.54 centimeter for this uh, loop length for this particular course. If you go for this course, obviously the front bed needles is not knitting. So, uh, so if you include the float length, if you include the loop length of floats, then the average loop length will become 0 0.8 for this particular. So, here I am counting uh, the float length also. So, the total needles and the total length of the yarn, I take out the yarn from the course and divided by total number of needles. So, this is how I observe the loop length of this. So, loop length in the float case is lower 
but if you just observe the loop length of uh, back bed naturally this will be higher so this will become 1.6 so which is which is higher than 1.54 so so but since here the float is present so the average loop length which has both loops as well as float so the length of loop plus length of float of from the back bed so if you are counting both then it is 0 0.8 centimeter average and if you are just counting uh, the loop length of the back beds then it is 1.6 centimeter so it depends how you want to explain so um, this is including float as a loop length this is excluding float as a loop length so in this case also if you go for alternating half milano this is 1.63 centimeter and this part is 0 0.77 centimeter with float and if you are just counting the loop length of back bed ignoring the length from the float then it is 1.54 centimeter double of just double of this so um, here uh, in milano rib and rib ripple also you can measure the loop length now let's uh, now let's go for whales per inch and cores per inch and gsm so in case of whales per inch the number of whales which was observed for the half milano was 6.5 um, alternating half milano was 7 then milano rib was 7 rib ripple was 6.5 CPI was 7, then this was 7, then this was 7, this was 11, okay, course per inch. And if you see the GSM, GSM of uh, this was 457, 461.8, 480.29 and 505. 0.65. So this is how you observe the GSM. So this is uh, you can clearly see when you have two floats consecutively you can see a major difference from Milano rib to rib ripple so from 7 to 11. So when you have two floats consecutively on front bed in this particular needle if you if you try to see why this 11 has come so it has the uh, the needle has make the loop here but in this case the needle is actually head loop is there this needle is not doing anything then you if you go for this part again the the needle is not doing anything so so the hell loop is still there and in the fourth course this hell loop is raised. So, so you can see naturally the hell loop is under high tension when the machine is knitting. So the moment you release the fabric, it will try to shrink the fabric in length direction. Because of that, number of courses will increase. So this will try to relax. So it will pull the fabric in whale direction. So the fabric you will observe lot of shrink is in length direction because of hell loop. So with this, I am going to end here and uh, I expect you to go through the influence of tuck and float with other literatures which is found online and uh, you can also design um, float and tuck variation um, on the machines and uh, practice yourself. So thank you very much. So we with this, uh, I am ending the structural analysis part of the fabric from the next class i am going to start the mechanical characterization of the analyst like once you make the fabric how much you can stretch the fabric what are the recovery aspect of the fabric what is the shrinkage of the fabric so those type of analysis i will be doing in the next lecture so with this i am stopping here stay tuned enjoy knitting Thank you.